Hi book friends, how's it going? It's Kat. Thank you so much for stopping by today for today's video. If you're new here, welcome. I have a bunch of new subscribers. I want to say welcome and thank you for subscribing. I sincerely appreciate it when you subscribe. It not only helps my videos, but it also helps the authors that my videos are on and the books that they are about get better visibility in the YouTube algorithm. I always have to stop and think before I say that word because it's kind of a big word. Anyway, so thank you so much for subscribing. Today's video is on the book called Us After You, which is Claudia Bergeau's latest release. What a great title. What a great cover. Holy smokes, that cover model is pretty hot. Um, and I knew that... Okay, let me back up. Claudia Bergeau is a newer author to me. I have read one of her books before. My dear friend Dawn Edwards, who is also, also an author, and I have done videos on both of her previous books. The next video that you will see from me is will be on her third book, which is called Red Hot. That will be released after you see this video. And so Dawn introduced Claudia to me. I read her it was a Christmas book. Oh my gosh, I'm blanking on the name right now. Dawn and I included it in our 12 Days of Christmas Romances. So I will put it below in the description box if you want to check that one out. That was the first book I had read by her and I loved it. So I was excited to be able to read Us After You. Now I knew that Claudia had written several books right? I mean, I think she's probably written like 10 books maybe. And so I wondered when I read this if I was going to feel a little lost and like I didn't know what was going on. And I have to say that a little bit, but not in a bad way. It actually made me want to read and find out so much more about all the characters. So not lost, but definitely I felt like, okay, how, are th how do these people fit together? Where's the connection going to be? Because as the book starts, it's two very different stories that kind of are happening at the same time, and then they meet. She did it a little interestingly in that, like I said, I was like, okay, how are these two stories that are going gonna connect? And when it did, you know, then it was like, oh, it all makes sense now. Something that Claudia does so well is there are so many wonderful characters that this book and then the previous Christmas book that I read, which I'm so sorry that I'm blanking on the title, her characters are just, you know exactly how the character that you are reading from their perspective, how they fit into the world. The family dynamic, especially because this is the second book I've read, the family dynamic in this book was really complex and really interesting to me. This book is primarily about Tucker, and he has like four last names, so <laughs> I didn't write them down. I believe he's Tucker Decker. <laughs> I liked him right away. He is, oh boy, how do I even start? He is, as a personality, a caretaker. He is a bit of a playboy, He's a musician, and then he turns to, you know, kind of having like a stable nine to five, very wealthy, does very well for himself kind of job, um, but definitely super likable and super like strong kind of swoony type character that I love. And the fact that he was such a caretaker and turned nurturer, oh my God, like, a man with a baby, forget it. I'm just a pile of mush. I have talked about it before that, like when I saw my husband with our children the first time, holding them after they were born, I, yeah. I mean, I just fell in love with him completely all over again. I definitely, that worked in Tucker's advantage. I already thought he was swoony, but then we added a baby to the mix of this book and forget it. 
I mean, I just, I was like drooling the whole time. Some of the other characters in this book, so it's about, primarily about, the main players are Tucker and Sage. And I'll get to Sage in a minute, but I loved the other characters that were really very prominent as well. And that was Hannah, Zeke, Rocco, Ethan, is that right? And those are Tucker's bandmates. They are his childhood friends. They were bonded as childhood friends that carried in them into starting a band together and then through into adulthood. And Tucker has a very interesting family life. His extended family is very interesting. And I believe that's a lot of Claudia's other books. And that's why I say I'm so excited to go read them. But his family, the, these friends have really turned into his family. These are his ride or die people that support him. And I loved the relationship that he had with them. It was, you know, it was very real life and that, you know, there, some of them are struggling with addiction. Some are trying to get sober. Um, Hannah's the only girl dealing with these four men and what she brings to the table with her friendship with them is very different than like the bromance that the guys have. They all take care of each other and look out for each other and are essentially a family. They really are. And I loved that about them. They were tied so close together. Sage is the other main character in this book and I liked her from the beginning. I connected with her right away. Um, she's a feeler. She has, she has started her, when the book starts, she has started her life over. Um, she took herself clear across the country. She is leave, she left behind her parents and her ex-husband, very painful for, very painful divorce with some domestic abuse involved. Took herself all the way across the country to help her grandparents and to the sleepy small town. So right away, I liked her. Right away, I was like, oh, what a sweet soul. She has a sister, Sienna. The book starts with a phone call from Sienna and her being like, oh, she's calling me because she needs something, because she knows I always help her. So you know there's a little bit strained between Sienna and Sage and that Sage just kind of goes with it because she wants her sister in her life. They both have a very strained relationship with their parents and they both are needing the love and protection and the nurturing that they didn't have growing up and they want that as adults. It's taken them to other places in their lives and it took Sage, in addition to a, a bad marriage and getting out of a bad and abusive marriage, to go across, uh, completely across the country to live with her grandparents and help her grandparents to find herself but she's lonely she wants she's ready for something else in a way and you know I just really felt like I wanted something good for her I wanted something to happen for her I wanted her to find somebody whether it was just friends or a significant other that she had so much to give I wanted that for her because of the shift that this book takes in the story and something that happens that brings Tucker and everyone that I talked about together with Sage and her sister, that's where the story meets. And I don't wanna talk too much about that because I feel like it will be giving spoilers. But remember that Sage and Tucker are the main characters. And it's about a situation that they are put in. And something that they um, have been asked to do. That's what I'll say. Tucker and Sage have to rise to the occasion. And there's a beautiful little snuggle bug that needs them. And everyone steps up and has to help take care of the sweet little snuggle bug named May. And I loved May, that her name was May, because May is actually one of my daughter's middle name. 
and it's spelled the same way. So again, little extra connection that I loved. So us after you is the title. So if you can go there in your head and if I explained it all, you know, maybe you'll understand what I'm trying to say without me saying it directly because I don't want to give you a spoiler. I, you know, I just, yeah, I try not to. So that being said, like when I thought that was bad enough and that was emotional enough that, you know, I could, you know, I have these things in my real life in a lot of ways. And so it was very emotional for me to have what happened happen. And then Claudia kind of kicks us again. <laughs> and something else catastrophic happens. And that's when I had to take a breath because, and see, I'm going to get emotional now. And I don't want to because I, you know, almost cried in my last video, which was so good. Anyway, but this is the part that I love about the books I read, that they can bring these kind of emotions out in me, you know? So the thing about the second thing that happens where like literally the wheels fall all the way off the bus actually has happened to me personally. Uh, personally, well, it's, you know, happened to my family. And I lost a family member in the same manner and it's still very raw and hurtful and hard and you know, something that we struggle with as a family every single day. And Tucker felt this a certain way about this person. And in my life, it was that person. So when you read the book, you'll kind of know what I'm saying. So that being said, I was like, oh my gosh, like, it was really, it was very hard to read. Um, she writes it really well and you understand, I mean, it's a situation you can never fully understand. But that being said, she was very delicate and she, it was part of the story and you know, it was emotional. I guess that's the right word. And she did a really nice job of bringing those emotions out in me. And with that extra connection that I had to it, um, helped make me a, you know, teary mess. And, but I also saw the beautiful side that she has throughout this whole book and the whole meaning of the book. And that helped get me through it. And interestingly enough, that's what helps Tucker and Sage and everyone involved and all the other characters. That's what helps them get through it. It's this shining light that they have. And I mean, you can't help but love this shining light that they have. And that's the part that I think is really the shining star of the book is how even in your highest highs of your life, to be able to have the love and support that these characters had. And then even in the lowest lows, that those people are still there to love you and support you and don't judge you and try to help take care of you and all of that. She did an excellent job writing that and portraying that on the pages. So you know I always have my favorite parts and I always highlight like crazy. And when I take notes and prepare for the video, I always like to mention a few of my favorite parts or funny things that the character said or things that touched me and something that Sage said that I really understood and I really felt from her is the beauty about it. Those who don't know me well, believe my lies. How am I? Lonely, still hurting from my divorce, not because I miss my ex-husband, but for everything I lost during our marriage, my worth, confidence, I work hard to keep my spirits high. I keep going to the self-help section of the bookstore and grab books that'll help me heal. One day I'll be better. I'll believe in myself. For now, my grandparents have to think I'm fine. It's human nature. I just understood Sage and where she was in life, not because I've experienced it myself, thank God, but because I just understood where she was, Claudia gave us the right words that helped me connect to where Sage was. And I loved that. And then this next one is a little long, but 
I alluded to how much a man with a baby can do to me. And, well, I, not just any man with a baby, but, you know, like a cute, hot guy, you know, like, and like my husband. <laughs> but this is what Sage says at one point about Tucker. When I head outside to the terrace, I spot Tucker holding the baby close to his heart, whispering, maybe kissing her temple. The picture is achingly beautiful. It makes me want to approach them and be wrapped by the bubble of love that he's building for her. There was an earthquake shaking underneath, stronger than the one I felt when I heard the news. It threatens to suck me in and fill my heart with hope. Fill those empty corners in my heart with love I've never experienced before. My heart's pulse skips erratically. I close my eyes, blocking the sight of them. This moment is so precious. I wish I could belong to it. Be part of the love he's giving her. To give someone so tiny everything I am without reservations or fear. They say nothing is perfect, but this moment might be. W will I ever be a part of something this sweet? Girl, I got you. Like, yeah, I could exactly picture what she was seeing as she was saying it. There's so much that Tucker said. He, I loved him. He took care of everybody around him. That was just him. And that really is what speaks to me when it comes to a male character. If they're like that, I'm a, I'm, I'm a goner. I'm done for. So there was so much that Tucker said about the people in his life that he cared for that I wanted to highlight. And it's not straightforward with Sage and him, but it's a love story. It's a romance book. So we know that we get some romance and that there's love involved. And he said this about Sage and I just, I died. It was just adorable. Someday I'll learn what makes her smile and maybe even count how many freckles are on her nose. I mean, oh my God. See, I'm like, I'm like, why counting freckles on somebody's nose is like, makes me want to cry? I don't know, but it does. That's Tucker. I would definitely highly recommend Us After You by Claudia Bergeoa. Claudia, girl, I just have to say, I, I need to devour everything else. If you've read other of Claudia's books, let me know which ones you've read in the comments below. I'm dying to read them. I wanted to mention that I also started my very own group on Facebook. It is called Cats Romance Readers. I would love to have you join. I'll be doing behind the scenes stuff about my channel and when I'm filming and stuff. We can share book recommendations. I'll do some giveaways and the usual that being in the book community has to offer, which is amazing, I have to say. I will see you very, very soon.